Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Predator Arena right here at the Rio Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, where Key Sports International is proud to present the Tiger Challenge. This special event is sponsored by Tiger Products and is co-sponsored by Key Sports International and the Rio Hotel. On behalf of both of our players, our fans, and everybody else involved with this production, we'd like to express our appreciation to Tiger Products for their unselfish support in helping to make this event possible. This will be a nine ball format, race to 21, rack your own, winner race. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our two competitors for the Tiger Challenge. Representing Taiwan Typhoon and Sight Golf Pool Balls, please welcome Jung Ling Chang. Thank you very much. And, well, and representing Tiger Products, it's Robocop, Dennis Okuyo. Good luck, gentlemen. Go ahead and land for the first break. Race to 21. This figure figures to be a very interesting match, Bobby. It's a race to 21. Chang considered one of the best players, in, in I believe he's from China. Taiwan. 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 Uh, uh, well, he's considered to be one of the top Asian players in the world. Yeah. But uh, Orkulio, you know, we all know how well he plays. He he's plays in the all top games. Three of uh, all, all games. All too. games. All yeah. games. Right. And if I had to put a put a figure on this in terms of uh, who the favorite may be, I would have to say Orkulio would be a two to three game favorite in the race to 21. That's just my, you know, my opinion on that. But uh, I agree with that. I think he might be a couple game favorite. You know, you don't get to see much nine ball played anymore. It's going to be kind of interesting just to see how the balls break. And yeah, and, and uh, now that you mentioned that, nine ball is a game that the, controlling the cue ball off the break playing nine ball is so crucial. You really yeah. have to control the cue ball when you're playing nine ball off the break. Not that you don't have to play in ten ball, but playing nine ball, you really have to have good control of the cue ball, which he just did, pocketing two balls on the break. Look at this. This is this is the type of a layout you like to step to the table with, particularly in the first game of a oh, match. Yeah. You really want to send a message, and you want to get the, into the rhythm you enjoy playing. And there's nothing better than to go to the table and look at the ball's position as nice as they are now. Because you know, all you need to do is stay focused, keep your concentration, you know, and, and play the game you enjoy playing. All the balls are really positioned really, really nicely on the table. He's got the seven knot ball there, right there by the eight. We we'll just shoot the seven in the side, probably after shooting the six in the corner. And this is going to be all. How nice if these balls open up on the break. He made that corner ball straight in. He did. Yep. Well, that's. Uh... That means that the break now becomes much more important. Yeah. Also, controlling the cue ball off the break now becomes, you know, something that you must do. Whenever that corner ball starts going straight in, the breaker has a, a huge advantage. I'd say that uh, I'd say that the breaker has a. It, it's worth two games to break the balls. Oh yeah, winning that leg is really important. Nice to get out of two or three four game head start. Just roll up here against the rail, bounce off maybe a half inch. Like this, he's perfect in line. Yep. Let's see how he plays this. He could go to one of two ways. He could hold it, or he can go across table three quarters of the way. I think he'll hold it. I mean, just draw back like maybe a foot and a half. Oh, look at this. He's going across the table. Perfect. Yeah, there was a couple different ways, depending on the angle that he had. Yeah. Uh, we up here have a problem at times seeing the right angle. When you're at the table, you can feel the angle so much more. Yeah. Easier, and obviously he liked going three quarters of the way across table. Chang wins game number one. He takes the early lead in a race to 21, one to zero. There's a, a, a rule in effect on the break that if you park, it's, it's a three ball rule. Uh, I believe that if you don't make a ball on the break, at least two balls have to pass. Three, three balls Correct. have to pass the head string. If you make one ball on the break, it's two balls. Two balls. And if you make two balls on the break, it's one, one ball. ball. Yeah, it's always three balls. Got to either go past the string or 
the combination. Of and if you fail to do that, then it's a foul. No, no, no. It's the incoming player's option to shoot or pass it back to you, just like a push up. It's not a foul. Oh, it's not a foul. Not okay, a foul. If, if you don't uh, complete that, then the incoming player has the option to either shoot or pass it back to the breaker. Now keep in mind what Cotton said. He made that corner ball on the break the last time he broke yeah, the ball. Yeah, four, see if the four goes. We're talking about the ball on the wing on the right side, the way we look at the table. That's the four ball. Straighten the hole, watch. And he did it again. And he also controlled the cue ball very nicely again. He got a little bit of a, a, a kiss off the two, but he Still does have a shot. Still can get there, but it was straight and hole. But straight in the side. Look at these balls. Playing nine ball, that's why it's so important to control the cue ball off the break yeah. playing nine ball because the rest of the balls, you know, because there's only nine balls. If you pocket a ball on the break, now there's only eight balls on the table. So therefore, it's a much easier run out playing nine ball than it is playing 10 ball, which means that you better have better control off the break playing nine ball. Twice across table, nice speed. He wants a little bit of an angle, which he has got. Yep, he'll just bounce out and shoot the five in the corner. Nice to win that leg, wasn't it? Yeah, like I said, the break is, uh, in my opinion, when the corner ball starts going in, I give up two games to take the break. In other words, if I were to Kulo, I'd say, give me the break. Take two more games on your side. That's what I mean when I say it's worth two games. You wouldn't do that. I would do that. You would. I swear I would. <laughs> I remember a, a little story. <laughs> don't start. Don't no, start. Don't, don't. We count. I think we're off the, are we on the mic still? Yeah, here we are. Yeah, here we go, we're back on. Yeah, I have a little story that I'll share with you. You know I like them. It was in the U.S. Open. Uh-huh. It was Mike Siegel and uh, Nick Varner. It was in the semifinal, maybe in the finals. Maybe in the finals in the U.S. Open in Chesapeake. Actually, it was in Norfolk when they, before they, they switched to Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. And the corner ball was going in every rack. Siegel needed one game and Varner needed two. Mm -hmm. But it was Varner's break. <laughs> so, I must not finish. <laughs> <laughs> and Siegel looked up at me. Is this, is this a true story? It's a true story, yeah. And he said, if I had a choice, I would rather break and give up the game. And, uh, me, me, meaning two. Yeah. And, I, and I believed him. Because when you reach when you reach this level of play, you know, like Chang and Orcolio, if the corner ball goes in the break, all you gotta do is play shape on the one and you're out. And I figure I figure that it's worth at least two games. And he was right. He lost the match. And Barner won the US Open. He hit that ball nice. He come close and grazing that nine. Look at this. He just now he just swings straight over and ice two mm -hmm. to nothing. Dennis hadn't got out of the chair yet. No, he's, he's going to roll up, I believe, though. He's yeah, right. he's, he's straight in, go yeah. forward. Yeah, he's close to straight. Oh, no, no he, he fooled both way. of us. Yeah, he fooled both of us on that shot. You know, and, and, and to shoot that shot in the fashion that he did as opposed to rolling it indicates to me that the guy's very comfortable with the, his ball uh -huh. striking ability. Yeah. Rack number two goes to Chang. He now takes a 2 nothing lead in a race to 21. Yeah, that corner ball going in on the break is really strong, you know I mean? Oh, yeah. Woo. Very strong. And he's breaking them good. He's stopping the cue ball in the center. He's really breaking the ball solid. So you're leaving town tomorrow, huh? Going back to Dallas tomorrow? Yeah, I'm going to be leaving y'all, going back to Dallas, Texas tomorrow. And I really would like to spend some more time with you guys because I really enjoy the game of eight ball. And... Uh, it's 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 it is a more interesting game to watch being played, in my opinion. 
and you have some great eight ball players in this in this event as well. Of course, Oquilio, you got Darren Appleton, who I who I think is the best eight ball player and in the Jason, world. Jason plays top notch. He's one of the better eight ball players in the whole event. Jason Shaw. Yeah, yeah. Well, he won a couple of major tournaments. Yeah. Well, he sure closed out the ten ball great, didn't he? He, he, he played good. Yeah. He played, yeah. He, played, he could he have. Uh, he could have very easily been in the finals. Yeah. Very easily. One game uh, well, difference. Let's see if the five goes here in the corner. Nope, it was headed that way, but it got. Notice what he did with the cue ball. It went forward, and that's what I was talking about when I said you really got to have a controlled break playing, playing nine ball. Look how fortunate this is. The two H wired. It looks pretty close. I don't know how much separation is in between the two and the eight. You maybe know, but a, maybe a half an inch after, if that. Yeah, but it's certainly lined very, very nicely uh, into that corner pocket. But he does have a little angle, mm -hmm. which means that he's going to probably have to cut the two slightly to, right. to his left. And with that understanding, he's going to lose control of, of, of the cue ball a little here. Let's see how well, it, uh, how well this works out for him. Like I said, now he's elevating. Oh no, it was straight in. He didn't even I have to. A little bit of, yeah, he kind of cheated the pocket. Yeah, he hit it good. Like Ronnie Allen used to say, you take care of Whitey, she'll take care of you. All the time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the great Ronnie Allen. Uh, we've lost some real icons of the game in the last couple of years. Listen, like, you know, talking about them guys, you know, and I've had a couple of people say they didn't like it, but I'm going to tell you something. In my opinion, there's a lot of great players like Ronnie and Cole Dixon and on and on and on, and I believe they should be mentioned to stay alive in people's hearts and their minds. Oh, yeah. Don't you think so, Billy? Of, of course, of course. I mean, course. how can you, you know, how, if I know a little short, quick story about cornbread, people should love hearing it because he's a there was one guy like that, and there'll never be another one, you know. So. Oh, I I agree, and I, I really. You know, you know. I'm sorry. I really enjoy. Uh, I'm they're thoroughly entertained by listening to, the the players and people like yourself and, and you, you know, Freddie Benavegna and Danny Di Liberto yeah. and guys that remember so vividly, yeah. you know, back in the day, the, the, the different players and the things that happened, you know. I think that's so colorful and. Uh, Sure, it brings back the history of what, yeah. uh, what happened back then, you know, to people that didn't have the opportunity to watch it or to even hear about it possibly. I mean, these are classic characters, these guys. You know, they're not like just a bunch of shortstops that never did nothing. These are great guys. All legendary people we're talking about, and, and stories should be shared about those people because they were so great. This is a little tricky right here. This is a tough shot off the rail. Boy, how good did he hit it? He's, he, Dennis hadn't shot yet. No. Two nothing Chang looking to. Make it three nothing. Yeah. Dennis Aculio, if you can get a get a shot at him in his chair, if we can get a shot of Aculio in his chair, is it possible that we can do that? Yeah, he seems just so composed. There's nothing seems to bother him. See, he's not fl he's not you know antsy. He's just sitting there waiting for his turn because he knows that whenever he gets his turn, if he can keep it together, which obviously that man can, yeah, he's going to perform just as well or possibly even better than Chang. That's what's going through his mind. So he's very composed, even though Chang has strong three racks on him. He's not flustered or bothered at all. I was at Justin's Tar Studios, and Alex was playing Boosty, and Alex runs like eight racks, eight ball, broke the balls, they were all sitting tough, and Boosty got up and ran out like he was a headache to nothing. Like, you, those guys are composure, you know? Yeah, and there's a lot to be said about being able to keep your composure, you know, and not allow certain things to bother you, to yeah. distract you, because when you get to the table, you're going to have to, you're going to need everything you can possibly you can muster up to beat players like Chang or Coolio, you know, and, and to be uh, see if distracted in any way. He's you're not playing the win. three in the corner. Let's see if it goes. He hung the five up last time. It just come close, but I believe this one's going. Yep. 
Well, that's three, right? And he controlled the cue ball again beautifully. Yeah. Let's take a look. The two ball will be, you know, here comes the five. He's going to pass it. Yeah, it's yes, it did. Okay, now he's got a tough, uh, a tough decision here. Now he can back across corner. He could slice it in. I what mean, do you think he's going to do? Either shot, you know, is difficult. <laughs> or he could play a safety. I think he's going to play safe. If he banks it, I don't like to cross the corner too much because he's got to keep the cue ball in the middle. If he misses it, he sells out. Okay, I here's the situation the way I see it, Bobby. I don't think that he's laying well for a safety. Uh, I think if he hits it with the speed, go two rails possibly behind the nine, I think he'll lose control of the two ball. So, therefore, I don't like that shot. Backing it across corner, yeah, that's like a either do or die shot. Right. Cutting it in, very difficult shot. Consider, uh, but the four ball position in the upper left hand corner, I'm looking for him to cut it in and go toward the uh, go toward the seven with the cue ball. If he hits the seven, he'll, he, he figures it'll be okay. I like cutting it in. I think that uh, I think he'll win his share more often By cutting, cutting it in as yeah. opposed to banking it and for sure playing safe. I don't think the speed of the safety is available for this for this, for this shot. I like slicing it in, going yeah. in, and gambling with that shot. I think he's ducking. He might try to go behind the seven. Mm -hmm. I think he's ducking. That's the, that's the only reasonable duck here. That's what I thought. See, that, I like this shot, though. I thought that's what I thought he was going to do. but. Well, you know, it worked out really well for him. I, he got kind of know. fortunate a little bit hitting that ball, coughing the... I figured with that safety, he would lose control of the two ball. He was yeah. able to control the two ball and the fairly cue. well yeah. and the cue ball nicely as well. So uh, he's left our cool old nothing to shoot at. He's going to back kick it with inside English, hoping to stay by the four. Well, he needs another turn on that two, which he got. Yeah, he's so, safe. He got safe. I don't think mm. he can hit it. He's already behind by three games, three to nothing. He really can't afford to fall behind much, much further than that. But of course, he really didn't have much to say about it, did he? That's a very nice angle there. Well, Tough gotta, shot. He's got to hit this ball right in the back of the head. I like the way he's, even though he can hit the ball right on, he's got a much better future by kicking at it. Oh, yeah. Julio finally steps to the table with a shot. Not an easy shot, but nonetheless a shot. He can cut it to his, his left, our right, the way we view the table. He can go then three cushions from position on the four here. Big shot coming up for Julio. He trails three to nothing. He really can't afford to fall behind any further than that. And he does have something to say about it now. You're in dead stroke today, aren't you? You are. <laughs> I can feel it, buddy. You're in dead punch today, really. You are. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Maybe a little, uh, little right English here. Not much. It'll keep him right. keep him short. Yeah, he's gonna go three cushions. He'll shorten it up. You don't want to go too long. That's why I said uh, a little a little right. Yeah, little See, a little right English would have killed it off that it first was, rail, yeah, yeah, yeah. and maybe it would have then died out. You know, adjusted the angle enough to where he wouldn't have gone long. Yeah. I just think he hit it too hard. Well, what is he going to do here? You think I think he's going for the bank here. He's, he's close enough to the ball, and I do believe he has the angle to bank across corner. And if he can, can if he does have ball, the yeah. angle, if you got to keep the cue ball down there, I can't tell. I can't really tell. He's, uh, he's, it, he's looking to go behind the eight, but that's not available because the four ball, I believe, is frozen to the rail. He's got to pinch this and play shape for the same pocket. If he's laying too thinly on this bank, the play position for the same pocket as he pockets the four, they don't opt to play play the he's, safety, which he's done here. He's ducking. See, the frozen ball was the problem with I that know. shot. Oh, but look it looks like he may have gotten he lucky. lucky here. He got real lucky. He's trying to go behind the eight. Right, and I mentioned that that ball was a very, very. He hit a little fat. Is why, yeah, but still, right. like you say, he's got to double kiss the ball if it's froze. Yeah, that that option was. Very tough because it was a frozen ball. 
he got a roll here. I would, if I were he, I would just shoot. I don't know. I think I just shoot softly here, but I don't think he's going to do that. That's a tough ball to hit going across the table like that. Well, ball in hand, what a luxury this is. Now he can play the four in the corner, five on the side, six in the lower, excuse me, six in the side, seven on the other side, eight in the top corner, and nine in the bottom corner. At least that's that's the plan. Probably, you know, the and by playing the five in this side, it gives him a better better control of the cue ball for the play position for the six on the other side. He would like to get sort of straight on the six, favoring and cutting it to the left. He's going with the, he's going to the corner. Yeah, he didn't have a right. He had the. He went past the line that he wanted to be on for the ball on the side, huh? Well, you're not going to win anything arguing with this guy right here. If he if he if he wants to run the balls a certain way, you can bet that's the right way. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's one of the finest, if not the finest, technician in the world when he's at the table. I mean, talking about a player that understands the game and what great work ethic, work ethic he has. I mean, he is, he's always, uh, you know, experimenting and doing things at the table, whether it's practicing his break or uh -huh. certain shots. I mean, he's always working on his game, and it certainly shows when he's at the table. He, he's a textbook player. And you know, it very rarely you see him get careless. Very rarely yeah. you'll see that guy do something carelessly that'll cost him a game. That was rack number four. Coolio finally does win a game and now trails by two games in the match. Three games to one. Now we'll have an opportunity to watch him break the balls and he will control the cue ball off the break mm -hmm. because that's what he does extremely well. And when you're playing nine ball, like I mentioned before, it's so crucial to control the cue ball off the break, particularly when you reach this level of excellence as these two players. you think he's going to break players. with that jacked up bridge, or you gonna break, he's going to break from the side? Before he breaks, what do you think? I think he's going to break from the center or, or off center slightly, maybe that, two with inches. That, with that jacked up bridge you're using? And he's going to control. He's going to try to bring that cue ball back to the center of the table. We'll see here. See if it which way. Now he's trying to, he's, no, he wouldn't. I didn't think he was going to. Now he's trying to play the seven in the corner. The left wing ball he's trying to make in the corner straight in. This this particular break uh, favors the one in the side. Look, no, he made that corner ball, see? Straight in the pocket. That seven went straight in the hole. Yeah, but he's losing his cue ball. I don't think he's going to stick with that break, even though he's pocketing balls on the break. I don't like that break because he's not controlling the cue ball well. But he is getting that cue ball to the rail quickly. You know, which will then preclude other balls from kissing it into the side. So maybe he likes that. Now, the yeah. three and four are tied up at the other end of the table, and that's a big problem here, particularly when you're, when you're, when you're getting the corner ball off the break. You want to have an open table and where they're spread nicely. But they're not spread nicely because of the position of the three and the four, and it's a very difficult situation to remedy, Bob. You know what? He might be able to get in here... He's shooting a two next. Is that the two down here on the rail? Yeah. He might be able to get down here and go two rails and hit and go into them balls down there, Billy. Yeah, that's a possibility. Or if he goes past the two and gets on the rail, then he can go one rail across and come in behind the four. Based on These the... These balls aren't hard to hit if he gets down here, the three and four. All right, you don't think? Do you? No, no. I think that he can do a lot. But based on the angle that he ends up with on the two, he determined exactly yeah. what he wants to do with the, uh, with the, with the three, four. I like what he's looking at now, like getting on the high side of the two and then going two rails on those balls. Cue ball just floats right down there and hits that long rail. We'll see where he gets on the two. If he has the angle to play to play on the side of the two where he pockets the one, he can, then he can draw the cue ball two cushions toward the four. 
if he has the other angle, that's a little tougher angle, I think, to negotiate. Because I, I think I would rather draw with two cushions as opposed to following it. Because following it, uh, just for some reason, it's, it's, it's tougher for me. But if he doesn't have the angle to follow it nicely, oh, he's going to play it in the side. No, okay, that's, why, that's why I like it here, right here. Okay, now he's going to have to go draw it to, to, to the rail that he's standing in front of now. See, the, the, he's, he no longer has that two, two rail option two. here. If he hits his cue ball, it pushes it with low at 5 o'clock, wide jingle, he goes right toward the ball. That's my opinion. Well, he's got to hit a rail up, here. This is a very difficult shot to negotiate. Even if he's able to draw the ball to that side rail, he can hit the four and the three and scratch. And scratch. So therefore, a lot of problems he's confronted with here. Matter of fact, I don't think I would make him a favor to do well with this shot. But of course, he's fooled many people before with his excellence play. So I believe let's, that's if he fine. was like an inch more this way, he would go two rails like I was saying. Like, you know what I mean? Double the corners and come out. That's what I think. But he, we'll see, we'll see. Drawn, you're right, if he draws it, he might scratch well off the three. Yeah, it's very, very risky to, to draw it. Even though he would like to draw it and go to that rail, now he's going to go straight down table toward the... Uh, and maybe play safe and just kick him behind the four. He's going to play, he's going to play bottom rail speed here. Now we went to that rail. This, he went this. to that rail. It's very risky look here. Look shot. Wow. If he didn't get a shot, it's an injustice. Because that's he how well that he perfect. hit it. Yeah, it was, that yeah. was perfect. Right on the money. Yeah, and, he, and I like the way he hit it with the speed that he hit it with. Oh, it was right on the money. He hit it so nice. Right that was a money. real pool shot right there. Right on the money. Mm -hmm. Boy, he hit it nice. And that's another reason why Orculio, when he was in that chair, he was so relaxed and comfortable and composed because he knows the type of, uh, you know, skills that he has. And he knows when he gets to the table, if he's composed, he'll be able to surmount that lead of three to nothing, which he's already working on right now. Beautiful player to watch. But not if you're playing them. is smooth there's no doubt about that no question chang was able to string three racks on his break okulio now is on his second rack three to two chang over okulio raised to 21. he's chewing that gum like nick varner used to chew it back in the day yeah. you know yeah i don't know does that chewing that gum relax you i'm gonna have to get something. me a couple yeah. packs he still chews it too yeah. <laughs> he just got done playing that tournament in Denver. He played, he played one match perfect, like about two months ago. We're talking about a student of the game, Nick Varner, and a, a, a player with a work ethic. Uh, Nick Varner is, is that player. I mean, he's always at the table practicing or trying to do something to improve his game. He's a real blue-collar player. Played all games good. Oh, uh, all games good. He's what, in my opinion, back in the 90s, late 80s, 90s, he was the best player along with Mike Siegel and, uh, all co of course, Buddy Hall. Yeah. Those three in particular were the three best players of their time. And when you're, when you're, when you're talking about all games, you're really going to put Varner right up there at the top. Varner might have been the best all-around player of the three. Hopkins was right in there, too, I think. Much better control of the cue ball that time. Uh -huh. He needs that kiss. He got a kiss. So he needs some more. Uh, he needed a little more distance from the rail with that one ball. Now he has a he has a decision to make here. He can either back it cross side. He's fanning it down the rail. Fanning it down Don't the rail think? is possible. You know, you know, when you shoot as straight as Arculio, yeah. you know, this type of a shot is isn't really that intimidating. But to me, it is. But of course I'd be <laughs> I'd be ducking. <laughs> I'd back it across the side. Okay, he's walking around the table. Now he's looking at the pocket you suggested, fitting it in the corner. I bet he makes it. He's feeling it. He's chewing that gum. He's so relaxed out there. He's concentrating. There's nothing on his mind except pocketing that one. He got down on it, and he got back up. He wasn't comfortable. He's going to take another look at it. 
No, nope, he's still not shot. comfortable with the shot. shot. That's the shot. second time he's gotten back off the shot. Yeah. So he may change his mind, maybe cross side. He already came up twice. That indicates to me he may change his mind here. Let's see what he does. No, he, he's gotten back up again. He's shooting it. He's looking at shooting it in the side. I think he's looking to play a safety here. I think he's looking to put, put the one behind the nine. Mm -hmm. And leave the cue ball behind the deuce. Oh, I don't think he can do that. I just think he wants to try to double him up with the nine and put the one behind the nine. No, he went cross side. Yeah. He, he, when he got up twice, whenever you, a player gets up twice from a shot, you they're know doing, he's pretty uncomfortable with the yeah. shot. So therefore, he may change, if providing there's another option available, he may change his mind and choose the other option. He got a little unlucky there not, to not get no shot on the two. You know, you know this is a very difficult, difficult type of a, a situation. He may be better off trying to bank that two into the four. I think when it's all said and done, that's the shot he's going to end up shooting. You know, it seems like a, a haphazard shot, but you know what? I don't see a safety here. I like for him to uh, to either cut it in and go toward the four with the cue ball or bank it toward the four. He's hiding behind the eight. Mm. <laughs> it's, just, it's just too tough of a shot to pull the it trigger is. on. I, I kind of think he's going to bank it toward the four. I don't know. I think he's ducking. No, I think he's going to bank it toward the four. That's what he's aiming at now. This is this is probably your your, your best shot in terms I, I of percentage. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I mean, hit pretty far up the rail, make the four. Yeah. Once he's made up his mind what he's going to do, then he, when he gets over the ball, that's one hundred percent effort on the shot. There's again. nothing out there that's appealing or even close to appealing. So what a dilemma this is. But he's going to end up banking the two toward the four. That's his only reasonable shot if you you know or chance to win this this game. He's looking at trying to looking at the cut, but that the cut's not there. I think he's ducking myself. Uh, tough duck. Behind the eight, just put the cue ball two on the side of the rail. I'm telling you, he's ducking. Look, he's ducking. What? No, yeah. he's trying to cut the yeah, ball. Yeah, uh, that's what I figured he was going to do. But it was a, just too tough of a shot. Yeah, I didn't like that. That's just he really had to cut that ball in. Well, you can see that it was that it was possible because he overcut the ball. Yeah. You know, he wasn't really happy with the bank to the four. I figured that the bank to the four or cutting it in and sending the cue ball toward the four would have been the. Uh, are they playing call shot then? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, then he was just trying to cut it in. Chang's at the table. He leads three to nothing, three to two, and uh, balls are really. Positioned quite nicely over the table. Looks like he's going to extend his lead to, to four to two. And he'll have the break, which is <laughs> pretty big. He's breaking him. Pretty good. big, considering that corner ball keeps going in. Well, the the eight ball start, starts tomorrow. And that's a race to what, nine? Yeah, that's that, you know, the, not the team thing I call it, but all the, the four uh -huh. countries playing, you know, one player from each uh, country on the, each team. chose to draw that ball as opposed to going two cushions following it. Is he, switch, is he opposite handed now? He switched hands? Well, he better be. Yeah, look at this. He's come up a little short. But it's amazing uh, when the guys switch hands, it looks the same. Same bridge, everything. I don't know how they must practice a lot that way. 4-2.
I really like the way Chang breaks the balls. He, you know, he, he's, he handles that cue ball really nice. Yeah, he gets it. He's centering it right in the middle. There was another uh, complaint on online about commentators calling the shot and everything, but that's just the way the game's supposed to be called. You know, I uh, mean, I mean, me about it. yeah, the, the game's really supposed to be called by by bringing forth the op, the uh, you know the options available, the type of option it is. You know, and actually the percentage of one option compared to another, and what do you know what the pluses and minuses is are are with those options. What else are you gonna say if you don't talk about the shot? You, can't you know, tell. nope, they don't want to hear our stories. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do? What, what's left? Bobby. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell a story. You can't say what we think he's gonna do. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Well, you know the the the, uh, the advantages we have as com uh, as commentator here when we watch you watch a match is we're able to see the angle and based off of that angle we can determine pretty much what options are available bring them forth and uh, you know discuss which one is better suited for that particular situation and you know, you know what it's a lot harder to commentate on this nine ball and ten ball business because it's like connect the dots and nine times out of ten I mean how many things can you say it's not like playing a one pocket. Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree. You got three or four options every shot. Where this here is pretty much shoot the ball into the closest hole it sits. You know what I mean? I mean, I wonder where he's going to shoot the one and two here. You know what I'm saying? You know where the three's going. I mean, it's you know I mean, it's obvious. So okay. I mean, Listen. What? The three ball rule came into effect here. Chang pocketed a ball on the break, but well, he failed get, to get two balls past the head string. Ball. Now a Kulio. Take has the option to either take the shot or pass it back to Chang. Obviously, he's taking the shot. That's that rule. I don't know. It's kind of a iffy kind of a rule to me. Why would he ever pass? I mean, unless he was hooked. You know? I mean, why? <laughs> so for you people out there that are kind of confused on why are Coolio's at the table, that's exactly the reason why. When you break the balls, you're playing a three-ball rule. Three balls must pass the head, the head string. If you don't pocket a ball, if you pocket one ball, two balls must pass it. If you pocket two balls, at least one ball must pass. And that's not what he did. He didn't uh, fulfill that. Very observant, Billy. Okay, the three to the five is a little bit of a problem here. He's got to get... I don't know. He's, he's going to have to draw. To hit it? He yeah, he's, to he has to try to draw one to it now, it looks like. And he should be able to knock it in front of the side. It's a very uh, touchy shot. He's playing pretty thin on the three here. Nice stroke here. It'll go to the rail and just clip the five. Knock the five out of the cue ball and go straight across. If he hits the five. Yes. He wants to clip the five. He yeah, was it, it, he it, it was it thin on the shot, and I brought that yeah. up. I said he looks like he's pretty thin on the shot. Had he ended up with a flatter angle where he could have drew the ball back a little bit better and easier, he probably would have got much more movement with the five. He wasn't able to do that, and he's now found himself with a tough situation. You know, you, you almost have to think that he's going to back it cross side here. He does just load it up with left English and cue ball reverses off that end rail. It's a pretty tough shot because of the position of the eight. Well, he'll miss the eight, won't he? he well, hits pretty in. tough shot. That vibe is almost frozen, so you know he's going to have to cut it yeah, yeah, pretty he's thinly. Yeah, quite thin, yeah. Can he duck? I don't, think, no, he I don't know how much of the five he can hit on the left side of the five. Yeah. Because if you're going to duck, you're going to have to hit the left side of the five. And go back behind these balls. Yeah, and that point is right there. I don't know if he has uh, the ability to uh, to hit that rail and without hitting that point to that side pocket. Yeah. Like Bobby That's said, he would like doing. to go two rails across with the cue ball. Let's see what he does. That's what he's doing, I believe, Billy. Just he won like two with the cue ball. He's hit it with great speed. He's going to position the cue ball right there on the rail. I don't know if he's found the gap there. 
I think you know, he, he may he have looked, found the gap. He, he did. He looks like he's right in, the, right in that ankle. Yeah, valley. there's a window right there between now, the look. seven and the nine where he may be able to hit the five. I think the six has him. It's real close. He might be able to hit the side of the five. I don't think he can make it. Well, I mean, he can twirl it and then maybe masse it back toward the five, but that's a very, a very, very low percentage shot. That's what he's trying. He may, hit, may back kick it with some speed or jump it. Let's see what he does. He's trying to mass it, I believe. Yeah, he tried to twirl it, and that was a, well, you know, he was quite fortunate to have gotten away with that shot, considering the method of, uh, that he chose oh, to shoot yeah. it. Oh, yeah, look at this heat. This is very interesting. He's got three shots the way I see the angle. He could hit the left side of the five the way he's looking at the table, which would be the right side of the five the way we look at the table, and go two cushions up table with the cue ball. Now he's got both the six and the seven for blockers. So he could end up in decent shape with that shot. He could, he could cross the five and try to position the five on the other rail. Mm -hmm. That's a very difficult shot, not much margin for error mm -hmm. with that shot. Or he can try to put the cue ball behind, behind the nine, it, yeah. and that's very difficult. That's, hard also, that's yeah. very difficult. I look for him to play the first shot. I look for him to play the cue ball back up yeah, table where it so. is now. And he's, for, he's trying to go behind the nine. Yeah, this is very difficult. So let's see how well he work, this works out for him. This is a very difficult shot. This has to be hit with perfect speed. Oh, he went for the bank. He went for the bank, and now he's, he's positioned the nine oh, he's on been the nine rail. Straight in. <laughs> this has to be struck perfectly here. I think both balls are frozen. And he did. What a shot he made on the five. Yeah, I never <laughs> thought he would bank it. You know, what a, yeah, I didn't think he was going to go for that. That's a heck of a shot. You know what? I guess he, I guess he considered that no matter what shot he shot or opted to shoot, it was going to have a high Sell degree out. of difficulty. Yeah. So therefore, why not go for the pocket? Go down swinging. I mean, how many of us have been schooled to do that? If yeah. you have a safety or an offensive shot of equal difficulty, you're better off in in most cases of going for the pocket. Yes. Let's see how well he controls the cue ball off the break. The last time he broke the balls, he controlled the cue ball quite well. Let's see if the eight goes in the corner, in the left wing ball. Straight in. If he's drawing the cue ball back to the rail. And he, you know, I believe he has a thin cut in the side on the one. And uh, from our vantage point, it looks to me that it is available. It's not an easy shot, but as well as he hits balls, I look for him to put it down. The two ball positioned on the right side of the table, and that's, uh, that's probably where the cue ball's headed. It's headed toward the two. So I think that, that the shot in the position is probably equally as difficult. And let's see how well you, uh, that works out from here. He's going to hit it with, no, he went toward the this, 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 this seven with seven. the cue ball. And I thought he might hit it when he was going. I was going to ask if you think he could get by there because it's going like real close. Well, you're lucky he, got, he tied these balls up over there anyway. It's a little bit of a saver. Right, Bobby's referring to the six and the seven position on the left side of the table. I was going to comment on that. Could possibly be his salvation. But where the four is at, he can the tear him out you know, from the four to the five. Yeah. He's moving the five now. He seed what you saw. He's moving the five because he's not going to allow Chang to use the four for a breakout because of the position of the right, five. Right. So, so that would be a possible option for Orkulio now. If I move the five now, give Chang ball in hand, he can't afford to play position to, to break out the six, seven off the four. And that should be, you know, one of the ways Chag would have to remedy the problem out there. If he moves the five, he's got to put it over here by the three. You know what I mean? He, he, or on the bottom rail. 
I think they put it by the three. I would I would rather up, put it by the up, bottom rail. Up, in front of the three, up. Not, well, even if he puts it on the bottom rail, and if he breaks, if he shoots it forward and skims, yeah. skims off the seven, he's spinning down here right. toward the five, even if it's on the rail. Right. Yeah, I like uh, it right here. Doing, doing what he did and you suggested was pr was yeah. the, uh, definitely the correct way of playing it. Because then he had he, he had the, the possibility of even tying it up. Yeah, yeah. A pretty shot he made there. You know, if I were Chang, I would really entertain the possibility of three fouling him here. Well, how would you hook him on the two? Well, I would go cross table with the cue ball. I would, I would put the, the cue ball behind the two and go cross table, hitting uh, hitting this side of the side pocket, swinging two cushions toward the three. Even though it's not really a great safety, I think it's 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 a, it's an option. It's something to think about considering mm -hmm. considering the problems he has with the three, four, and the six, seven. Yeah. He's looking to, to position the cue ball where the three is and play a, and play a, a safety. I, I don't. Nope, that's not, he's not what he's looking to do now. A lot of things going through his mind now, a lot of different possibilities and different options with different uh, results. He's going to make a commitment to try to run out here. If he plays safe for the three, that's what he's doing. It's going to be interesting to see what he does from the three to the four. I don't. I, I just don't know what he's going to do here, Billy. Well, I don't think you know. I I believe he can follow this. Yeah, a little follow. He he can still hit the four seven and have a cut on the five down the rail you know it's going to be a little bit tougher but he has a shot at it yeah but i don't think i would want to go that route even though it's 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 a possibility because what you, else can you just do? you're well you can bank the, the you on well, the seven behind the six i see and now he's really got a problem now he's really got a problem he probably thinks this four is a hanger you know if he happens to go into the seven now you know, it, it, it's very risky because of the uh, difficulty of the, of the shot with the four. You could miss the four and open up the six, seven. <laughs> yeah. That would be <laughs> a real blunder, wouldn't it? Yeah. He certainly doesn't want to do that. And considering the position of the cue ball in relation to the four, all that distance, I don't know if I would try to even pocket it and break up that six, seven. It's really risky. I thought he was going to do, and he well, did it like perfect. Huh? Well, it's it's split the wicket. It's just on the amazing, four. you know, and, and uh, split the pocket on the it's just It's just amazing how well these guys actually play. I mean, you imagine hit the ball like right straight. I mean, hit it perfect. It I mean, perfect. here I am up in the booth, and I'm dogging these shots. No, you're playing good. No, I'm I'm really dogging these shots you because I one. just I, I just no. can't I just couldn't pull the trigger. Well, that's on the first that ball shot. you've missed uh -oh, so far. Been playing an hour. That's the first ball you hit bad. Yeah. And I, I, hit, I really hit it bad because yeah. I wouldn't have shot it. No. I wouldn't have either, but I, I thought of him doing it, but I'm thinking, man, he hit that ball nice. And now he's going to have to play twice cross table here. Yeah. And that even complicates the accuracy. shot when you look at this shot how well he hit this ball yeah when you hit a shot with that type of speed when you pick up your speed to that like that then you, you really diminish the accuracy of the shot split the, and he split the pocket didn't touch the rail yeah, yeah. that's awesome yeah it really I, is yeah it makes it look so easy you know and that shot is really difficult right he's really playing well he's got to just draw back here right yeah he's playing yeah, really well 
Go back here, right near the side pocket. As bounce. well as he's playing, Bobby, I wouldn't be surprised to see him stroke this and get back and off that rail and hit it oh, hard. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna pop it, I believe. See how well wow. he's playing, you know? When you hit that type of a shot that carries that angle that that did, you really can't afford to hit that roughly because the pocket won't accept it. Oh, yeah. But if you have the confidence that I think Chang has right now, you know, you can shoot that shot with that, with that type of speed because of the confidence. Because you know you're going to hit it accurately. He's really playing accurately. I mean, that was a heck of a run out, a heck of an out. Yeah, you could, you, you say that again, that was one heck of an out. And he's going to get a, a ten, two game lead again, six games to three. That was a great out. Four to three. Excuse five me, to five three. Five to three. My, my, my bad, five to three, a two game lead. Well, he sure made a nice out, shooting them balls down the rail like that, never touching the rail. It's unbelievable. I like the way he's breaking, I like the way he's shooting, and I like his confidence. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that, co that combination is difficult to beat, but if anyone can beat it, and maybe we're going to mount the lead and come back. It's probably the guy in the Chang oh, rodeo. Yeah. But but uh, but Chang has really impressed me. Uh, it, it, when when I watched him play in the ten ball, he didn't play this speed in the ten ball. He was a little wobbly. Yeah, he was. He was a little unsure or something. But he's playing smooth now. I really I like the way he's playing here. But of course, it's still early in the match. It's a race to 21. They've only played eight games. And he's, he's like 25% of the way through mm -hmm. with five wins. He's got he's to get to 21, and he's almost 25% of the way. But the first 25% of this match, he certainly looks like the better player. But, you know, we really can't judge these matches on the first 25% of the match. We have to take a little better look at it. Yeah, I'm going to wait two or three more games before I make my pick. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like I'm going with Chang. Look at this Look break. at that cue ball. Wow. That's, was, that's what was, I was referring to when, 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 when Oculio broke the balls. I said, you know, he don't want to stop it in the center because he, he may be in fear of a ball kissing it in the side. Yeah, he was like right dead center, too. What an injustice that is, huh? Look how the balls are sitting, how they broke. Right. Whenever you break the balls as well as he did, Jang, that is, and get kissed in the side like he did. That's brutal. That's he an broke ugly, him so ugly scratch and a horrible feeling. Yeah, he broke them so perfect. Let's connect the dots here. I wonder what Earl Strickland would have said if that would have happened to him. <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Chang just took his chair, sipping on a glass of water like nothing happened. Siegel used to chirp. He would, he'd, <laughs> he'd be talking. He'd be telling everybody in the stands what happened. How can, he played good behind all that talking, Siegel did. You know, he'd be talking to everybody. You know, that's an indication that is Chang and Orkulio uh, that's an indication when bad things happen to you, you know, these unforeseen things that are really, and you're really ill-fated and the bad things happen. They, they, they treat that like it's nothing happened. I know. You know, if you can have that type of a demeanor and, and understanding of the game, that's just the nature of this game. Yeah. You know, we, and, and they're totally prepared to accept that. And being prepared to accept things like that, obviously they're going to be able to play more to their speed when they get opportunities at the table. I would call that thinking intelligently and uh, responding appropriately to it. Well, he got perfect here. Swing over here, he's perfect. Perfect angle. Yeah, he's going to come off that second cushion and go toward the six. And we'll hit it with the speed to come off that cushion. He wanted to hit it with more speed than that, but he hit it thickly, which slowed the cue ball up a little bit. He'll go two rails here toward the seven, hit like long on the long rail by that diamond by the side, of yeah. course. He doesn't want to end up on the rail. He'll apply a, a little like English. This. There you go. Nicely Perfect. done. And they got 
just about straight on the seven. Shoot and stop. You know, that scratch in the side was real big because you know how important breaking the balls are yeah. considering the wing balls going in. 5-4, Chang after game number nine. Well, I'm going to have my buddy Ken sit in there for a while. In a little while, I think our buddy Jay Helper's going to sit in. Everybody loves Jay. So. Are you going to leave us now, Bob? I think so. Give me your, let me. Right, the, right here. You want my number, right? Yeah. In case I, I might need to borrow something. You want to? I might need to borrow twenty dirty dollars one day. You never know how that okay, goes. Okay, Bob. Yeah. Jay, you forget it. No. No, Jay staked me to play several times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jay's take me to play several times, actually. He's a good dude. Yeah, my phone's off. Just call my phone. Got it, perfect. So I can program your number Thanks. in. Okay. okay. Got it. Thanks, okay. Billy. All right. It's been a pleasure, Bobby. It's been really fun. I hope to see you soon. Have a safe trip when you go back to Dallas, my friend. Nice working with you. Put you too. And, uh, you know, and when they take a break, you know, finish up that conversation about the Okay. Easy billiard. All right. Cause I, and whatever you say, uh -huh. I agree with 100%. Well, thank all I you. Can tell you. Thank you. No matter what it is. Okay, thank you. You know man. what I mean? I got you. <laughs> whatever you say, I'm right. You know it's going to be true. I got your back. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Billy. Take care, Bobby. Ken Schumann now is sitting down next to me. Ken, did you see that scratch? We saw the scratch. Uh, that was, it's uh, cold, Billy. That was really cold. You're right about that. That's uh, cold and cruel. Yeah. Because, you know, if he don't scratch there, he could have right, rattled off another five or six the way he was playing. The out he made before that scratch, I watched it. I know you and Bobby were commenting of it. He made five world-class shots in a row to get out there. Yeah, he's playing really well, and he's breaking well. Even though he's got kicked in that side pocket. Yeah. But he was you know, kicked in. Right? Yeah, even I though mean, he got kicked right. into that side pocket, like I'm saying, you know. The way he's playing and the way he's breaking, he just, he just, uh, you know, he forgot all about that. You know, because he knows that uh, he's getting the job done. You know, he's getting the job done. And stuff like that, in his mind, it ain't going to stop him. Right. He's probably saying, you know, I can deal with that because I'm just playing too good and I'm controlling that cue ball off the break too good. So... Next time I get to the table with an opportunity, you know, I'll get the best. I'll get the most out of it. I don't think either of these players has issues with bad things happening to them. Going back to the chair, they have short memories. They've both been, you know, on the big stages many times and in high high pressure money matches too. Well, that, that doesn't go in. Nope, that is going to go in. Unlike the ten ball, you're not you're not you're not calling shots That's here. That's right. Nine it's ball. all slop. Right. It's just regular old nine ball. And I think as much as we can make arguments for, you know, I, we like the way ten ball is played and all of that, um, the luck factor in nine ball just puts a little bit of extra drama into into matches like this. But you know. In the race to 21, usually the roles will balance out in a lengthy race. In a short race, they can be one-sided, you know, a race to nine, race to 11, and uh, one guy can, can really benefit and the other guy can never get a break. But I think in this length of a race, it's going to come down to who plays better, not who gets luckier. I thought it was important for Coolio to get back a little further than he did. And I was saying to myself when you were talking there, Kenny, it's really important for him to get back far enough to get away from the angle of going into that eight with the cue ball. So he's got to get back far enough considering the position of the six near the eight. Unless he draws rail. for the six in the corner. Just draw it straight to the middle diamond. No, watch the spin here behind the nine. No. Okay. He's got the whole cue ball, but he's certainly not ideal. You have to expect him to make this ball, however. Shape's automatic. 
It lays good natural speed for over and back. You're not going to try to hold this ball, cue ball, right? You're going to come back to about where the six is? Oh, yeah. you got to hit it with the speed to hit the second cushion. Right. Yeah, that, that type of a speed will probably increase the accuracy of the shot. Nice camera shot there, Tim. Thank you. It's really nice to be able to get these close-ups. Oh, he hit it right into the rail. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he I did. didn't like the way he struck that ball. Chang steps out of his chair. Delighted to see what he, what Oculio did, because it's not often you see Oculio hit a ball like that. And it's Trust me, that, I mean, that's really... Uh, yeah, and it's not often you, scra you scratch on the break and you only pay with one game. Usually it's two or more. I just I just think what Dennis did there is he just failed to put enough left-hand English on the cue ball. Well, I think what he failed to do was I thought that he should have hit it with more, more speed. speed. Yeah. Because you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, sighting the ball with more speed. It's more of a crisp cut. Right. And I think you you pick up on your accuracy with that particular type of speed as opposed to like rolling it sure. or trying to sure. kill it and as you or said, trying to use English to throw it in. No, no, I don't. It's too much going on with that with that shot. Right. And once you once you have hit the second cushion, you're in line. Either you know way. But, but I'm I, I can't really second guess a second guess Rocolio because he uh, is Rocolio. <laughs> you know, it's hard for me to do that and. And so uh, maybe he had other things in mind. Maybe, you know, I can't, I can't second guess him. I mean, if he's going to do something a certain way, it's probably, it's probably the right thing probably to do. Probably the yeah. right way to, to play it. Yep, I agree. This is game number 10. Now Chang has a two game lead in the match, six games to four. And he's going to be at the table breaking the balls, and he has been breaking the balls really, really well. He's been pocketing the corner ball on the break. And equally as important, he has, he, he's, he's controlling that cue ball so nice. And I noticed that from the offset. He was controlling that cue ball so nice off the break. And when you're playing nine ball, it's so, so important to control the cue ball when you're playing nine ball, even more so than playing ten ball. Because whenever you make a mistake with the cue ball playing nine ball, you're in, the incoming player has less balls to look at more simple runouts, right. so therefore controlling the cue ball becomes much more important. And the presence of one less ball too uh, gives you many more options uh, should you have to play a safety. You have more real estate to work with, you have more chances to hide the, hide the white ball, so absolutely it's critical. And Jung Lin is not going to change one thing on the way he's breaking, the scratch in the side. He knows it was a kick in, it was nothing he did wrong. And he's going to hit him the exact same way he's been hitting him so far the whole match. We expect the four ball to go straight in. He's been breaking from this side of the table, making the wing ball, mm -hmm. which is the four ball, like you said. Oculio, well, he did it again. Oculio is breaking from the other side of the table. Oh, he well, you know, it wouldn't have mattered if the one dropped because look where the two ball is now. But He's got to do some traveling with the cue ball here, Billy. And I actually like clipping the left half of this one ball with a little bit of center left and just come before the side pocket, kind of two rails, maybe three. He's got a big gap to come through. You just got to make sure you don't go anywhere near this corner pocket to the right of where he's standing. Do you see anything better? Well, this shot carries a risk. You know, no matter what he does, is, is difficult. Mm -hmm. There's nothing uh, There's nothing automatic. There's nothing natural. Right. He's going to have to use a good stroke unless he, unless, unless he just rolls this one ball in and cuts it thinly, ends up in the center of the table. That may be his best shot, I Kenny. Th I think, Billy, you're right, and it looks like he pointed to just past the foot spot, uh, excuse me, the head spot uh, for the cue ball where he will take all of that risk out of play here. He's not worried about the cut on the two. It's actually not laying as bad as it might look to you guys on the monitor. A little bit of... No, he, no, he, he shot your he, shot. Okay. Now, that's a risky shot yeah, because he, of the speed of the shot. You really have a... You know, there's a problem with controlling the speed of the shot. He was, he was able to get away. I believe he was able to have gotten away with it. He did. He did. He's got an angle now, too, on the, on the deuce where he can just float off the rail right at the three in the side. 
Uh, he'll want a little bit of an angle, of course, because he'll have to transition to the five. But you around the spot here would be ideal. But you can see that uh, some bad things could have happened to Absolutely. him with that shot, which. Uh, and that's why he gave some consideration to, as you said, just rolling up the center of the table, not very far. I guess he didn't want to take the thin cut on the two and risk the cue ball up and down for the three. It would have made it play tougher to get on the three good. Well, I think what he really had in mind was that if he, if he opted to play position for the two in that fashion by cutting the, th the one ball thinly, if he would have just hit the one ball a little more thickly than he was Intending to? Intending to, yeah. The cue he ball wouldn't, stays he there. He wouldn't have got the movement right. with the cue ball. Right, the cue ball stays there. So he didn't like that at all. Right. So he, he took the lesser of the evils, really, and he was assuring himself a look at the two, provided he didn't scratch, although yeah. he came close, but close doesn't count in pool. Well, I think you hit, you hit the nail on the head when you said that he was assuring himself on a shot on the two, providing that he didn't end up in a pocket. Correct. Okay. Right. So right. he was gambling that he wouldn't end up right. in a pocket, which he almost did. But that's the, that's probably the way he was thinking. Ooh, overcut that enough that it almost didn't go. That's where he wants to be on the uh, on the seven where the cue ball is now, because of the position of the eight. He wants to be able to stay on this side of the table. So therefore, the professional side on the seven to end up on is when he's looking at it to cut it to, to his, his right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, straight up the table. Well, that'll be okay because he's close to the seven. Yeah. And being close, you can always roll it in. And that's what he's going to do, Billy. He's actually going to cut the seven about a, an eighth of a ball to his left. But I think either a soft cue ball here or he could come all the way to the short rail with a little bit of inside if he wants to bounce off the rail and have, a, have basically no angle on the eight ball. I think you need an angle on the eight ball so you can get the cue ball a little further off the cushion. Because you want to go, you're going to want to go forward on the eight anyway to play the nine. He may, may, may just stop there and play the eight in the side for all we can tell. No, but I, I like this. Yeah. Just a little above center here. Hit the cushion and it'll go forward and to the left, maybe two feet center of the table. We put a good stroke on this though. A little above pocket speed here. Nicely, nicely struck, Billy. You can hear the Christmas of the hit, you know? He's just hitting the cue ball so beautifully. When you shoot a shot in the fashion that he did by hitting it with speed like that, that shows you they have a lot of confidence in your ball pocketing ability. And you're not really in, intimidated by the pocket you know, and with the speed that you hit it with, particularly on angles like the angle on the, the, the that, it was, that, that eight ball was on. Because if you miss that type of a shot with speed slightly, the pocket probably won't accept the shot. But he didn't have that type of fear at all. He just got and shot it with the, with the speed that he, that he knew he'd get off the rail and he would get that ice accuracy with the shot. But by rolling it or half rolling it, you, you really make the pocket play a lot larger. He wasn't uh, really concerned with that because of his uh, ability at this time to, sh to shoot as accurately as he's been shooting. I really like the way he's playing. He does have a three game lead, but this is still a race to 21. He's, he's a third of the way home. Must be a little spa or something on the one ball he's uh, put in his pocket to clean it off a little bit. You know, a couple breaks ago, he uh, he actually didn't didn't fulfill the uh, uh, the three ball rule what he were playing. Yeah, he pocketed a ball on the break, but only one ball passed the head string. And did Dennis accept or? Oh or yeah, Dennis it had a real nice was out. easy out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, what do you think of that rule, Billy? I really don't like it. You don't care for it, huh? No. Yeah. Because he struck the break pretty hard, and it just so just happened. Just the collisions. Just so happened the ball didn't get, but you know, getting didn't yeah. getting uh, past the head string, and yeah. I, I don't think it was fair. Well, it can be punitive, but it does take away the player's ability to break softly, and that's the intent of that rule. And it probably works out, you know, more than it doesn't. But both of these players have played a lot of um, WPA rules. And uh, look at this now. Well, he's got, he made a ball, so he has fulfilled the requirement. Because the eight, well, the eight was in the kitchen and came out. And yeah, but if the one wouldn't have got kissed back there, he would have. Uh, it would have been illegal. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know. So but they both wanted to play this. They wanted to play this rule. 
Uh, it's played in a lot of international competitions throughout the world. It's rarely played in the USA. Uh, it's just the, that's the rule they use in, in the Moscone Cup. Interesting shot coming up here. I he, think he can just go on, uh, on just past the seven ball here. And he did. Yeah. He had less of an angle than it might have appeared. But now he got a little bit straight. He may very well have to play the three up by past the four and stay right there for the four. It doesn't look like there's a big angle here, Billy. Certainly not to get to play the three in the same pocket as the two. I think that's much too risky. I think this is just float forward maybe. Is he drawing it back and out with low left? Yes, he is. Yeah, nicely done. Certainly was. What a beautiful great, hit great on the control. cue ball. What great control. What a beautiful hit on the cue ball. When you shoot that type of a shot, sometimes you you know, you shoot it with a little left-hand English and spin toward the seven. He really couldn't afford to do that. He hit it with a center axis low ball and came straight across table and stayed on the safe side of the seven and six, which was really nicely executed. Is he going to play for the four in the corner or the side? I like the corner myself, and so does he. This is similar to the, the shot that uh, he played on the eight ball in the last rack, although it's just a little shorter. He's got to center ball this and slide it out to his right at least a foot, foot and a half. He wants to be cutting the six ball to his right when he shoots the six. It's just about picture perfect right there. It's almost almost a stop shot, but he'd like to actually roll the cue ball forward. Maybe maybe one ball, just so he doesn't have to go around the nine to get to the eight. I suppose if he got a little awkward, he could draw it straight into the long rail, but he doesn't want to go around the nine, going from the seven to the eight. Yeah, but I think most importantly, he wants to pocket the oh, six. certainly. You know, I myself, would put put more 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 uh, focus on pocketing the six, and if I had to take the angle to go around the nine, I would do that. But I certainly wouldn't compromise the shot in terms of accuracy, because I uh, got to stay in control of the table, especially when that corner ball is going in on the on the break. Mm -hmm. You really can't afford to miss a ball like Orcullo did when a couple racks ago. Thin cut the six because right. he he hit it with the soft speed. All right. Yep. So therefore, you know, you really can't afford to compromise certain shots and run the risk of missing them because of that, because of how big the break is. And you got to stay in control of the table. Now he hit that shot nice. Yeah. Those are the type of shots that bounce back at you when you hit them roughly, and they need to be hit cleanly like he just did. Yeah, never touch the cushion going in. And uh, he's playing really well. He's doubled Arcullio's score. Now leads in the match by the score of eight games to four, Kenny. He's probably playing the best, the better of the two. No doubt about it. Right now. No doubt about it. Other than the scratch uh, in the side, the kick scratch in the side off the break, Billy, he had, I don't recall him making an error or missing a ball. Might have had a, maybe there was a safety error early on in the, in the match. I, I wasn't here for the first two or three racks, but... Uh, Ever since I've been watching, I uh, haven't seen him make a mistake. And I watched Chang play in the 10-ball event, and I really wasn't impressed with his game. Matter of fact, I thought that, that, that he wasn't really the caliber of player that, 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 uh, that Copin is, you know, and uh, his brother. And I just didn't think he was based off of his poor performance in the 10-ball. But now I've seen him play here in the 9-ball. I reevaluated, mm -hmm. you know, his, his game, and now I feel that he's really up there because he's really playing well. He controls the cue ball really nicely off the break. He's a great shot maker. He's very composed when he's at the table. I, I really, he's got a lot of strong attributes, you know, that, uh, that are very impressive. And I really like the way he's playing in this match against one of the most formidable players in the world in Dennis mm -hmm. Well, Billy, um, well, let's wait for the break here and then I want to just tell you something about Jung Lin. Ooh, the cue ball got a friendly bump off the three and another friendly bump off the five. 
Uh, he's the 2012 World 8-Ball Champion. So, A, you got to be pretty stout to become a world champion in 8-Ball, given the level of competition and some of the people that have worn that crown, including Efren three times and guys like Dennis and Carl Boys, um, and also to do it um, under, under a difficult format where they play group stages and then you have to get out of your group and then you go to single elimination and 32-man bracket. Um, it's pressure packed. So I am really looking forward to see him playing eight ball starting tomorrow here. Okay, here's a problem that he has. He's, he's pretty flat on the two if he's playing it in the corner to play position for the three, which is on the adjacent rail. Well, I kind of disagree, Billy. I think he's got plenty of angle. He may play the combination, but he's got plenty of angle on the two. Had he and see, he got there and he oh, and he undercut the ball. Yeah, now that I see it, I thought yeah. he was concerned with it. That's why I mentioned that because mm -hmm. he got back off the shot and wanted to yeah. reevaluate it. And I thought because of that reason, he was flat. Yeah, I thought he was given some consideration to the two six in the side, which would have sent the two towards the corner pocket if he was as awkward as you might have thought he was. But that was the first ball that he's actually just flat out missed. This is a tough yeah, shot right sure here. Is. It sure is. He's Dennis go. has, but Billy, he's got a he's got a piece of the cue ball because oh, it's over in front of the side pocket. He can basically hit it with a low right cue ball. He's going to probably have to go toward the four here. He's going well, rail first, he's going maybe. To be a four rails. He, watch the scratch, Billy. Watch the scratch. Oh boy, that was very fortunate. He was going four rails, but he hit the one so bad, or the two. I don't know if I like that. I, I didn't really like the choice there either, but it might have it might have felt right to him, as we mentioned earlier. You have a tendency to to preference certain sh playing certain shots certain ways to your own comfort level, even if it may seem unorthodox. But this shot here is going to be a difficult shot to hit well after he's. Air the last couple times at the table. He's got a very difficult shot here. Very difficult shot. And the results are indicative of the difficulty of the shot, even for someone as high level a player as Dennis is. And, you know, and he really hasn't been playing well. You know, so that has a little bit to do with it. Now, you don't have that confidence right now that Chang has, for sure, in, in terms of not only accuracy but other things as well uh, you know breaking other areas of the game and I thought that I didn't think he was going to hit that ball well for some reason because he's not playing his game right now no and he's pretty much kind of playing defensively almost put it behind the four cue ball behind the seven see in a shot like that you don't have to get the cue ball right on the cushion you've got two balls in the way He's got a ball just out in space, which is the hardest ball to hit. Now, I, I can't imagine him not hitting this, but coming out with anything good after contact is nothing for a champ like this. Just I'll just kick it in and get shape. Well, he, he kicked it in, and then he played position off the <laughs> kick with a kiss. He could have asked for anything better than what he got. If anything can get him out of that, you know, frame of mind or that whatever he's in well sometimes that's all it takes is one shot that just works out for you and all of a sudden you feel well maybe maybe the pool gods are back on my side a little bit and you get a little bit of charge of extra energy and uh, all of a sudden your focus hardens and you start playing like you know you can play it's uh, there's an expression we use in the game just just let yourself play just let yourself play don't force things don't force uh, your, your mental state. Yeah, you really have to get to the table with, and run some balls. And that, you know, that fortuitous yeah. role that he got there on that kick gave him the ability and opportunity to do exactly that, to get relaxed at the table. And I think that's what's missing right now. He needs to run some balls because even though we've played 12, 13 games now, he really hasn't been at the table enough times to feel comfortable with his speed, with his ball pocket, his accuracy. And it's, and it's racks like that where you can let out your stroke and everything is laying nicely to get comfortable. 
And so I think that's what, what he needed. He definitely needed that because the guy was already behind eight to four. And he really couldn't afford to fall any further behind than that. But what's equally important, Billy, is he now has to take advantage of that good fortune by making a ball on the break, getting a shot, staying at the table, running out, or at least being able to put his opponent in such a position where he may wind up with a ball in hand again. If he breaks dry here or something bad happens on the break, that good roll in the last rack is going to, uh, the effect of it will be minimized. Now well, he's breaking from the opposite side from well, Jung Lin. The, that's the side he's right, been breaking from. Right, yeah. uh, I understand. And let's see if he gets a similar result. We'll keep our eye on the three ball. And a nice cue ball with a horrible kick, but the two saved the cue ball, and he's going to have a look at the one. Made three balls. The four is next, and now he's got an he's got an angle. He can, he's going to be able to float towards the six and the nine, and he'll be able to, to cut the four in the side, even if he only comes a diamond or so past the side pocket. I don't think he can afford to hit it much firmer than that. Now this shot is a much easier shot that he had on the three. Plus, he's oh, probably yeah. a little better prepared to shoot this shot. Like I said, you know, he was at the table a little while ago learning some balls. So he's now starting to get himself a little more comfortable at the table. So this shot here is, is a little easier shot than the three, the one that he missed, and he's more comfortable. I look for him to run out here. Yeah, I agree. That three ball shot, the cue ball was pretty much on the rail. He's got a big piece of the cue ball to hit here and a little angle too, which actually helps and he hit it. You know what? I, I, I'm surprised he hit it at that speed. I really didn't think he needed to come all the way down and around those two balls. I thought he would just roll it forward past the side, cinch the ball there, and make sure you have a look at the four. There's no, no way you couldn't get on the six from the four. It looks like it goes in both corners. So a very... Uh, important unforced error there by Dennis after a tremendous break making three balls and like we said that kick in last game and the result uh, may only pay a one rack dividend he's got to hit the second rail here to make the one to come around just about to the right of the middle diamond on the short rail so have a look at the four it's not a hard ball to pocket but it's a hard ball to make sure you pocket with the right angle off the second cushion, just about the first diamond here by the one ball, maybe a, an inch or so past it is where he wants to hit. And with a little speed here. And he did it beautifully, Billy, and just as we said, right about to the middle diamond on the short rail. And now we'll have a look, see if Vincent can give us a good look at that six ball. Pretty sure it uh, looked like it passed the last time. Yeah, I think he has almost a whole pocket. If it, he's got 90% of the pocket yeah. for sure. And he'll be close. Oh, thank you. Very good. Very good. We can see that he's got at least two-thirds to three-quarters of the pocket, especially being this close. And he really could stop right there for the seven. There's no need to get real tricky here. Now he's playing so good that he might draw it back all the way down to the head string off one rail. But should he choose, he could stop right there, cut the seven in, go f all the way around the table. You'd like to be near the seven, of course. You know, I agree that he maybe should consider stopping there because on this shot, if you draw it back, sometimes that side yeah. pocket becomes too big of a pocket. Right. And you draw the cue ball right into it. But if you're feeling really good about, you know, about how you're playing, you can draw this ball. Yeah. And I think the fact that he's cheating to the uh, long rail side of the pocket with the six is going to have him draw into the rail and out oh, yeah. because he had to cut the six a little bit. If it was straight, like you said, then the side pocket scares you a little. So Dennis is going to only grab that one game after he kicked the three in the side and he sort of butchered the one ball here in this rack and it may cost him much more than just the one game and it erases the one that he got after his kick-in. Well, 
in that eight World Eight Ball Tournament that Chang won. I'm assuming that the best players in the world were in that tournament. Absolutely. All of them. Yeah. Appleton, it's, it's, Reyes. Appleton, Reyes, Boys, Holman, Fyan, Shaw, Melling, Suke. That's enough. Okay. <laughs> Have I made my point? That's enough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you're talking about players like those guys. And then to go through. You're talking about Single winning, elimination. Winning a world tournament. That's, a, that's really a world tournament there. Because yeah. you did name four or five of the top and the best eight ball players we have today in the world. Well, you and I did some commentary last year at the uh, Make It Happen eight ball. And uh, I know, I remember you just praising the great eight ball game of Darren Appleton. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and justifiably so, justifiably so. Yeah, Appleton uh, has certainly impressed me as uh, the strongest eight ball player in the world. You know, his patterns are impeccable. I mean, his, his, his just his ability to think at the table, and, and it's really, I mean, he's, he's really got it together playing eight ball. And he's got so much confidence playing eight ball. He knows he's the best player. Mm -hmm. Look at the cue ball control. And once again, he got that, you know, that kiss. And this time yeah. he, he stayed could, away from the pocket. That just rubs off the nine a little bit and gives him the cue ball. That's it. That's you know, actually. The, the cue ball hit the magic rack and took a. Well, took it hit a the nine. It hit the nine, Billy. Yeah, but it hit, hit the, the rack, nine. too, and it went over to the side. Yep. Yeah. It actually gave him an extra half inch. And uh, now he can get his cue tip anywhere on the cue ball he wants. He's looking to see if the five goes past the eight in the side. If it does, I think that's the easier pocket to play. Just a center ball here into the right-hand rail, middle diamond, and out somewhere around the head spot. Good shot uh, right there. Thank you, Vincent. That's beautiful. Um, it does go. And the seven, which is in the upper left of the table, actually transitions nicely to the eight. So... The, and the eight's off the cushion, which means it'll go by the points without any consequence. So this is all about what, where do I want to play the five ball? I like a center ball here, playing for the five in the side. He may hit it with low right and try to play the five in the same pocket as the deuce. No, yeah. I like the side too. Yeah. Side pocket all the way. Definitely, yeah. You know, I think that the uh, the seven to the eight is a little tricky. Well, from right about where he would be now, I think just a little tricky. He's gonna have to pl he's gonna have to play a good angle on that seven. Yeah, but look where the six is. I mean, is he could draw straight back off the six, maybe just past the side pocket, play the seven and be one rail at the eight ball. Probably got to go three here, Bill. I don't know if he's just going to follow this with inside. I like three here. Just because you can hit the five ball better. But he played it with the inside, and I didn't want it to come out too far. That's okay. I don't, I don't think you need to go a whole lot past the side pocket here. Maybe at most one diamond pass. You, you definitely want to keep your angle on the seven, which then allows you to play the eight in either corner. And it gives you two choices going forward, or if you get uh, too severe, you can drag it with low right, two rails out. No, he's going to go forward off the off this ball. Yeah, definitely. And I think, considering the closeness the eight ball is to that side pocket, he's going to have to play the eight in the, in the lower corner pocket. He can't really afford to try to play a position for the eight in the same pocket as he's shooting the seven. I agree, and I don't think there's any need to. I think he's heavy enough on the seven to slow the cue ball down, and it'll be about middle diamond on the long rail. And still took the care to have a little angle so he can follow this up nicely, and the cue ball will get off the cushion at six inches or so, maybe even more, and he'll roll up for a straight in shot on the nine. I think he's going to shoot this with a little center ball and get off that rail. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not going to roll it. Look at 
I think that the speed that he hit that with and, and, and how he cut it increases the accuracy of the shot. I like to hit, I like shooting those type of shots with that with that method, you know, hitting it and jumping off that rail. Yeah, a little it's bit almost as a, opposed to rolling it forward. Yeah, it's almost, for lack of a better term, it's like a stun run through hit. Well, you, just a half a tip above center. You just pick up the accu on the accuracy of the shot. Right, You're right, right. But you, but you by cut being it away from that point. Precisely. Yeah. Hey well, everybody. Uh, well, I just wanted to while John Ling is racking the balls, I just wanted to mention to everybody that we're going to open up tomorrow uh, in the CSI Eight Ball Invitational at 11 a.m. Pacific time, and our very first match here on the TV table is Warren Kiamko and Ping Chung Ko, younger brother. And uh, following that, at uh, 1 p.m., you're going to like this one. It's none other than the man right here, Jung Lin Chang, against the Magician. Wow, what a great opening match that is. It's the second, it's the second TV match, Reyes, Reyes and Jung Lin. Ray is considered for many years as being the best eight ball player in the world. Mm -hmm. And now, like you say, Chang winning the world eight ball event. And uh, yeah, two August, years ago. Yeah. So that figures to be a great match to watch. Yeah. Too we bad some, I'm going to be some, on the airplane. We got some, some really terrific stuff. I'll give you the rest of the TV lineup here at the end of this rack. And the groups have been redrawn, by the way, the four-man groups, uh, and I can, uh, I'll can i give you those as well. But let's see if he can keep the momentum going here. He leads 10 to 5 in a race to 21. Wow. That eight ball three balls on the break. Yeah, eight ball doesn't matter right now. He's got to look at the three ball. It's still spinning, but, you know, it's... It's a, almost a little awkward on the speed here, Billy, because he's so thin on the three. He's probably going to have to put a little extra right-hand English on it, catch the three, a touch on the heavy side to slow the cue ball down, and then the cross side scratch comes into play. So he's got to be very careful here with what he elects to do. Very difficult shot here. This is a very difficult shot. Certainly he's kind of like limited on what he can do because of the position of the six cross table. He can't go twice cross table because of the position of the six. Mm -hmm. So therefore he wants to like, like slow it up a little bit, but then to do that, I don't know if the speed lays for that shot. He's gonna really compromise on the accuracy. Well, that's what I said. Uh, because of that, he'd have to hit this a little on the heavy side with some outside English and, and almost, you know, slow the cue ball a little bit. Even if he got to the center of the table for the five, that's okay. But uh, making the ball is, of course, the primary objective here. The other thing he might look at, and it's probably tougher, although Efren would do it, is a little bit of inside English here and come this side of the five ball. Well, that's but pretty that's, tough. That's, that is pretty tough. Well, now, the last choice, Bill, is just a high ball and go at the five. And if you hit the five on either side, you should be okay. Well, what I would do is I would cut it in and go, one and a half rails with the cue ball, take a tougher shot on the five. Yeah, but he still has to get down table a little bit. He can't be right on top of the five. No, and I have would a go nine. one and a half rails. In other words, I would miss the side pocket and go halfway across the table again. Right, but will he be, you know, further enough down where he won't have like almost a 90 degree cut? That's what I'm saying. So. He's given this plenty of extra thought because this is the key ball to this rack and it's to stay at the table and keep the momentum going. But I would make sure I pocket the three. Well, I go one and a half rails cross table, even if I had to end up with a bank on the five. See, I thought running into the five wasn't a bad option there. No, it was a good option. Because as long as he didn't hit it flush and double kiss it, he should have. He should come out with at least some look at it, and he, I think he's got no choice but to play it in the small side pocket, Billy. I mean, obviously he could play it in the corner, but if he plays it in the side, what can he do? Can he can he hit it firm enough to get the cue ball across the table for the six? That's that that makes the shot play tougher. You're hitting it into that uh, facing of the far jaw. And uh, you'd have to do so with with a pretty 
pretty good speed. I mean, he could cinch it and bank the six. But once again, it's this is almost just like the ball he just shot. Making the ball here is is the primary objective, and it's it's tough. That, that camera angle, you could see how narrow of an opening he has. He's looking even again at it to get his aiming point, because you've got to clear the near point, or you can, you've got no chance. I think it's make the ball and take the bank. No, he can go across table easy with that angle. Yeah, but he overcut it, and that's why the cue ball went that far. But maybe he could have. Nevertheless, Dennis is thrilled to be standing up. And now he'll be able to go long of the side pocket and bounce off. <laughs> he's he's moving with the shot I and mean, he's not really whew. he's not really he's not loose yeah uh, he's not loose yet not not Dennis loose anyway it's got to be clean too and it was okay stop stop and it's over here Dennis has kind of a very unique stroke. He has a long bridge, but a short backswing. But he goes goes through the cue ball beautifully. So 10 to 6 is the score. Let me give you the rest of tomorrow's TV lineup, as I uh, told you I would. So once again, we're going to open with Juan Kiamko and Ping Chung Ko. Or Ko Ping Chung, that's younger brother. Uh, then it's Efren and Jung, Jung Lin um, at 3 o'clock. Shane Van Boning and Ralph Suke, one Hall of Famer and one future Hall of Famer. At 5 o'clock, Bustamante and Copigny, another Hall of Famer and likely a future Hall of Famer. And we're going to finish it up tomorrow night with Jason Shaw and uh, younger brother Ko again, Ping Chung Ko. He'll play twice tomorrow because Group A plays twice tomorrow. So that's the TV lineup for tomorrow. We'll also have action on the outer table. As, as you know, we've got a camera over there we can toggle to periodically and also keep you abreast of the scores in, on uh, table number two. And a little later on in this match, I will also be able to give you the final standings of the uh, 10 ball invitational because they have been finally tabulated. You know who won, but I can give you the full 16. So here goes Dennis, 6'10 down. Got a beautifully friendly bump there on the one ball. It's just sitting beautiful for him. Does not appear to be anything here that's going to stop him, Billy. One, two, three, and four connect with not much cue ball movement at all. And it looks like the five is sitting in front of the side. Watch the short back swing. You see that? He only pulled it back like three inches. This may be tough to reach. Yeah, he'll need the bridge. But the four is sitting right there. I mean, this is a stop or bring it back a ball. Now from this angle, he may have to play the five in the corner. It's just hard to see the angle. If he uh, can drag it past the six, he will. And he did, and he could.
you know, Billy, with this format and winter breaks and the corner ball going every time, uh, three game lead really doesn't doesn't seem like much. No, it's probably not that much because of the corner ball going in. And and winter breaks, yep. Oh yeah, <laughs> winter breaks for sure. I think of all the games that we play, winter break is most conducive to nine ball. I, I actually I like alternate break in, in just about the, every other game, eight ball, ten ball, and of course you know it's required in one pocket. But eight ball, ten ball, I think alternate break is is the right way to go. But I do think nine ball should be a winter break format. Okay, the one will pass, and uh, it's pretty natural to roll up for the two. The three's in front of a pocket. The f eight's hanging. It's just the three to the five, Billy, because he's only got one pocket for the five ball. He'll want to get close to the three, I think, to maybe play it um, from kind of the middle of the table and come two rails under the five, in between the five and the six, five and the seven, excuse me. So I'd want to get a little close to the two here so I could get close to the three. Uh, he's not going to get too close to the three from here. <laughs> he's, <barely playing. laughs> he's really unhappy with the way he's playing, and I can understand why. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. he's not really playing his game. He almost has to bank this in now. Well, I mean, he can slice it in. He'll just have a long shot on the three ball. And, of course, he can't afford to be straight in on the three. Right. He needs to have one angle or the other. Either angle on the three will help. But I think he's cutting this in. Maybe not. We'll see. Well, I'm not surprised at that. He did knock off the Derby Bank Division this year. Mm -hmm. That's the, probably the best angle he could have ended up with on the three. That's probably yeah. why he banked it. Yeah, I agree. And he hit that roughly. Uh, but he did get a nice shot on the five. Yeah, this is game ball right here. Watch, he's going to start walking a little quicker now, Billy. His, 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 his physical pace is going to pick up. I've seen him play so much, I'm, I'm pretty tuned into that. And he wasn't moving around the table this quick earlier in the match or even four or five games ago. But he's, he's starting to feel a rhythm now. <laughs> he's running around the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that myself. And now that three-game lead is only a two-game lead. Yeah. He's, even, uh, he's even asked the referee to mark his scoreboard for him so he can save that 15 seconds and just go right to racking and right to breaking. And why do you suppose he's doing that? To keep, keep a rhythm. Just to, I think he, he just feels that's autopilot for him. Rack them, break them, run them. Rack them, break them, run them. Yeah, it seems like Chang is a much more deliberate player. Right. He's never. He, he's not in a hurry to do anything. I mean, Dennis isn't machine gun Lou, but he's definitely moving quicker around the table. Van Boning does that a lot too when he gets when he gets on his his horse and he's moving. Is that seven going to get him? Do you see the position of the one where it is now? Well, that's actually the position that he's playing the one when he breaks the balls. 
I notice that one ball ends up on that side of the table near that rail just about every time he breaks the balls. The uh, one ball goes to, uh, to the other side of the side or whatever it was, and it goes two cushions over there, and the cue ball goes over that side of the table as well. So he's playing position on the one and making the corner ball. I want you to pay attention to that, and the people who out there are watching this match, pay close attention to how the cue ball, where the cue ball goes and the one ball goes after he breaks the balls. I think that's what's going to get him back into this match and possibly win it because of his ability to play position for the one like he has been doing. He didn't end up with a shot on the one because he got a little bit of a bad roll up behind this behind this the seven there. Yeah, just just by one way of observation to to comment on what you said, Billy. I think it's mostly accurate, uh, but the one a couple of times has uh, collided with another ball and wound up over there where it seems to be every time. Um, but as you say, I, I, I agree, he is probably playing it uh, for that side of the table and the cue ball as well. I guess we're going to have a brief timeout here. So uh, we'll take one, two, and we'll be back as soon as the players are back.